if everybody who started to use tobacco was 18 or older, you wouldn't hear a peep out of me, Chris. I would keep my mouth shut. But when I know that majority are re- being replaced with teenagers going through the roughest time of their life, which is adolescence, okay, that's the problem that I have. I have a problem with a store breaking a law and selling tobacco illegally to a minor. I have a problem with that. And will a smoker say, well, they're going to get it anyway. There's worse things they can do. No, there's not a whole lot of worse things that a person can do when it comes to tobacco. And I miss smoking every day, Chris. Every day of my life, there's not a day that doesn't go by that I don't wish I could put a cigarette back in my mouth and inhale deeply and enjoy it. Because I was one of those people who did enjoy it. Okay, I don't believe... I do not believe for a second that tobacco companies care about kids, and I don't believe that the tobacco control movement is doing enough about it to stop what we know is true, and that is they are still targeting kids and marketing kids because they have to. I think I, I think the media doesn't care either. I mean, we're talking about a, a series of problems here. It's not just the tobacco companies. It's not just tobacco control. It's not just the zealots. It's not just the pro-smokers and chewers. It's the whole attitude we have toward this thing, okay? And the people who are smoking and the diehard smokers who will never quit, I think they should have a right to keep smoking in the privacy of their own home if they're logical and smart enough not to blow it into the face of a three-year-old with asthma. Okay, right. that's all. I'm trying to what, use... What, what, about, what about the right to smoke in a bar? Absolutely, they should have a right to smoke in a bar. ab so freaking all right? Only because children don't generally hang out in a bar. Okay, I have a choice, and I've seen all the blogs, and I've read all the hate, and I've read all all the vileness about smokers being lepers. They're not. They have a choice to make, and that is when they're ready to quit, should they ever want to, they should be able to get the help necessary because we helped get them to start when they were younger, probably. So we have an obligation there. Uh Bars should be a place where a smoker should be able to go and have a drink, have a pint, have a six back whatever and smoke his or her cigarette absolutely so I, where, where, where do you think the um the, the line is drawn when it comes to government action when it comes to actually making things illegal you, you hinted there that you would you, you you think that um some bans on smoking in public places are, are good things i mean is it is it that you, you you think it's better that people don't smoke in public places or should there actually be a law against no, I, th- I think that people should use common sense but we know that people don't okay and if you if you're going to a restaurant and we know that smoking sections aren't necessarily uh, the best place. You know, it's like asking for no uh, chlorine section in a swimming pool. Okay, it's just, there's no such thing. Okay, there's no non-smoking section. So you would be in favor of a of a, uh, a law against that? I would like to see all public places where kids will go and pregnant women. They should be able to go in and eat a meal or have you know or watch a movie or be in a lobby waiting for entrance to some without having to breathe somebody else's smoke. Yes, absolutely. But I think bars should be a place where a smoker should be able to smoke. I think their own private homes because they're the ones that are going to have to face their children like I did. Okay, my children are still alive and I smoked in front of them for 18 years. Okay, while they were growing up. They're fine. I don't believe all the crap that I have to read okay, on blogs about you know the science that goes with it and I understand what we need to do in Mount Helena out in Montana and Scotland and I read all this stuff and I just, I just can't take it anymore because we've lost the rationale to this and that is treat people with dignity and respect once you turn on them and try to dehumanize them and make them feel like lepers you've got yourself a war okay and unfortunately with a war there's got to be participation and all you're hearing in this tobacco war is the loudmouth anti-smoking zealots the wackos the grab bag full of nuts that are there and you have the extremists on the pro-smoking side okay I get I work with people who smoke every day of my life. You have never seen me blow waft or smoke back at them or say Q get out of my I've never but they respect me enough to know my position that they don't smoke around me. Okay? That's their choice because we have used common sense, we've used rationale and we've used logic and love and compassion. There's none of that in the tobacco control movement and there hasn't been for the last ten, twelve years that I'm aware of. They're just greedy people whose egos are out of check who are now going to be funded for the next 15 years according to the MSA they don't care 
they just don't really give a crap anymore. And now we see all these new things that are coming up with harm reduction and more money being spent, you know, in in uh, other areas rather than what I feel should be spent on, and that is prevention and education. With good common good common sense prevention, not showing black lungs and clogged. I don't do that. I've never done that in my life. And my that's why I'm going to go on YouTube. That's why I'm going to do my own tobacco control for kids because I'm not going to get the uh, uh, accolades and the pats on the back and the support and the sponsorship from the tobacco control movement because I'm effective. And they don't want me to be effective, Chris. They really don't. And I'll say that to Matt Myers and I'll say that to anybody who asks me. They don't want it to be successful. They could care less because it's about money. Well, this, yeah, I mean, this, this is an interesting area because some people would say that the anti smoking movement has become a prohibitionist mm-hmm. movement. Right. Whereas other people would say that there's so much money involved now, particularly because of the Master Settlement Agreement, that they can't afford prohibition. Well, I, I think right now, uh, if they're, they're, I, don't, I think they're saying they want prohibition, but I don't really think that they believe it. Okay, I think what they really, really want is the knowledge of the fact that if they are threatened by losing this MSA money every year, every six months, however they're paid, however money's put in escrow, with all the stuff that's been going on with the now lawsuits by the tobacco companies who are going to try to shoot down the MSA, okay, that's scaring a lot of people because a lot of the attorney generals in some 40 states, not 46 or 50, but 40, some 40 states, they're nervous as hell because this money is now at risk because the MSA truly, and I've talked to anybody who's everybody, including some AGs in private, that the, the MSA is unconstitutional, okay, because of the compact clause. The compact clause, you've heard about that, right? Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, that no state will enter into an agreement with another state without congressional consent. That's exactly what 46 states did. They came up with an agreement without congressional consent, without any legislation, without any law to back it up. And then, and then what did the tobacco company do? And this is where the smokers don't understand their side of it. Their own tobacco company, who they are trying to, you know, gather around and rally around, they raised the price of cigarettes within 48 hours. I'm sorry, yeah, 48 hours. They raised the price of cigarettes over 50 cents a pack to now handle this lawsuit without a vote. Was, I mean, that would, was that not that was an illegal tax rise, was it not? I that, believe it, it, yes, it was absolutely. But the tobacco companies were in cahoots with John McCain and Matt Myers and Mike Moore and all the other attorney generals, saying we're going to raise the taxes, okay, across the board, and now we're going to let the tobacco users suffer the sin tax. And it's easy to see why you've parted ways with with a lot of these people because they want to destroy the tobacco industry. You don't want to destroy the tobacco industry. They want to put it up tax. You don't want to put up tax. They want smoking bans everywhere, indoors and outdoors. You don't. But don't don't you fear for your career? I mean, your 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 job and your love is is doing what you're doing, going out to all the schools. And you must have seen what's happened to people, even people like Dr. Michael Siegel, who no one can lay a, a finger on, um, you know, really scientifically or in terms of, you know, no one can pretend he's paid by the tobacco industry. I mean, you, you're a man who at one time, of course, was paid by the tobacco industry. Right, and then I was paid, that was paid by the other side. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in a conundrum, Chris, you know? I'm, you know, who's the enemy here? Who am I really fighting? Well, I'm not fighting anybody anymore. I'm tired of fighting. I'd rather just educate, and I'd rather put the word out there so people, 1, 10, 20, 500 at a time, will hear my common sense and logic, because smokers are never mad at me. Smokers don't get pissed off at me, Chris. When I, do, other than when I do a blog, if I I did Michael Siegel's blog one time, because I wanted to say how upset I was, well, I just got ripped up one side and down the other. But yeah, well, why do you think that is? Well, because they're so angry, they just think I'm another scapegoat. I'm a, I'm just another another uh, uh, anti-smoking zealot who's trying to pry into their life. And so I don't blog. I don't talk. I need to have uh, my story told by somebody. Like you, that's why you and I got in touch. I mean, I got in touch with you because I read your excerpts, and you seemed fair. You weren't hateful. You weren't angry. You were trying to get answers. That's all I'm trying to do. You know, when science gets debated, they got an ego problem. Well, that's all, that's all science is, isn't it? Somebody who asks questions, that's what science is. And when I ask a question, it's, I'm, I'm like Michael Sigel. We're told to shut up. We're, we're no longer you know, worthy of discussion because we don't agree with them. That's the corruption.